everybody. Welcome to my suburban oasis. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited. We got lots of rain, um, probably an inch and a half, so that's awesome. And the garden is so happy. So whatever you did to help out by doing a rain boogie and dance, or by praying, or by crossing your fingers and toes, I sure appreciate it, and so does my garden. Let's go take a look at what's blooming and some of the plans I have for making some changes. Let's go. Well, I must say, the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and it's a beautiful day to be in the garden. These two planters have been here for just a couple of weeks now, maybe going on three, and I had changed them out from some spring vegetable sowings, and they have some salvia in them. It's an annual salvia, and then the pink scaviola underneath of them. I also added to them some beautiful fancy finch ajuga and that is a beautiful bronzy gold foliage so i'll be adding that to my perennial garden at the end of the season and the dahlias in this pot are beginning to bloom now and the nine barks really glow in this sunlight Lots of zinnias blooming at this point. I think they look absolutely gorgeous. Look at the bloom. Now my hydrangea in this corner is just starting to put on its flowers. But it's going to be so beautiful. This is actually its uh, first real full year in the garden so I'm surprised it got as tall as it did but I'm really thrilled with it. The Persian blue catmint is coming back in this garden really well right now and I have a beautiful white flowering lily in here. All the irises are just starting to begin to die back a little bit and I will be needing to thin these out soon. But back behind them, we have some beautiful Russian sage. This is the denim in lace variety, and that's starting to bloom, so that is fun. And the size of my tomatoes, I actually have had some vines kind of come crashing down to the ground because of the weight of these. I think because of the recent rain, they really put on some weight. And we have lots of summer squash also growing. And that's growing beneath some more of the purple prince zinnia. And over here, the cone flowers are spectacular. They really do put on quite a show for a while. I love the height and the drama that they provide in this garden bed. And you can see the Kent Beauty Oregano that is in this planter has put out its blooms as well. Some of the salvia is reblooming down in front. And this pinky winky hydrangea is really filling out. I cannot wait to see the blooms on this. It's definitely going to be much showier than last year. The pink mink clematis has stopped blooming. Well, at least it is pretty much over. Um, but it really did put on a nice show this year and I'm definitely going to be getting a bigger trellis for that one. Lots of burgundy glow ajuga in the potage and we have this beautiful um, purple smoke tree and I have trained it into a bit of a standard. It was only supposed to be six feet tall so that's what we have going there, along with the giant sunflower, both probably at least 10, maybe 12 feet tall. I 
I haven't shown you my candy coral berry for some time, but it is starting to bloom now. It has itty bitty tiny pink blooms on it that the pollinators love and they will turn into beautiful pink berries in the fall. And they'll stay on for much of the winter and the birds will eat them. So that's really nice to have. Now let's take a look over here in the half moon garden because we have some new things blooming over here. I did plant out those red salvia into these containers. I thought it would be a nice backdrop or a nice filler with the beautiful silver of the cardoon. And I've already seen a hummingbird coming along to check them out. And here we have the Rose of Sharon. This is the Lavender Chiffon, and it is starting to bloom. Isn't that pretty? And this rose is now starting to bud out again. And I love its beautiful buttery blooms. The butterfly bush here, which is the Pugster Blue, I'm probably going to have to move out this fall. I think I'm going to move it perhaps over to the corner. I have one on the other side as well. But now this hibiscus has gotten just so, so wide and large. And it's going to be gorgeous. You can see so many buds all over it. But uh, definitely taking up a lot of space now. And I think this is its full size because it's supposed to get about four to five feet tall and wide, and that is right where it's at. Behind it, the Seven Sun flower has lots of panicles on it, and this will be beautiful to see flower. It will have very nice light white buds on it. And of course the other side pretty much matches this in symmetry. But I think it looks really nice. Now this was one of the small incredible cuttings that I had. It was just a small shoot that I cut off the side of another one that I had and it's actually flowering this year. So that's pretty cool. And I finally have a bloom on my fizzy dianthus can't remember what this one's called specifically off the top of my head, unfortunately. Now over in the side garden here, things are looking rather lovely, especially with the recent rain. Everything has just perked up again. The hostas have really fluffed. And back behind them, the two baskets are filling out quite well. I swapped them out last week and the one on the right is really starting to bush out uh, with the additional sunlight. And here we have the beautiful hydrangeas. These are also arborescens. A smooth hydrangea and they have definitely needed a lot of upkeep in terms of water this summer to keep them happy. And over here we have the strawberry sundae hydrangea that is starting to bloom. Now I decided I had a boom chocolata geranium that I have tucked in over here and I wanted to plant that one out into the landscape. I think the foliage blends really nicely with the ajuga that it's next to, but it's a very different shape and the bloom should be purple. So I think that will look really pretty coming out from underneath of that hydrangea. And it takes sun much better than the geranium that is behind it, which has some yellowing on it because it, um, really prefers the shade. That's the large root geranium back behind the boom chocolata. 
Now that rainbow sensation shrub that we planted despite the high heat, it's doing quite well. It looks really healthy. I think it's definitely happy to be in the ground. So I think this bed is just looking really nice. And um, more of the white daylilies back here. I don't know the variety. I've had this one for years. It's a really large flower and it smells absolutely wonderful. So I'm looking forward to that continuing to fill out in this area and provide even more of that white um, because it really does light up the kind of partial shade area because this whole area at the end of the day is in the shade. This nine bark to me, I just love the purple foliage on it. It's such a stunner. So this garden bed, I added those begonias that we got. Um, I really thought it would be fun to underplant the hostas with these as the blue scabiosa um, continue to fill in along the edge of this border. And I think it is a nice effect and I look forward to it filling in. And we have some coneflower along this border as well. We have some powwow white along with the Cleopatra coneflower. And then we have the regular purple coneflower that is right in front of the lemony lace elderberry. Also blooming in this bed now is this white David Phlox, which is lighting up the corner as well. And I think that looks really pretty. Now this is the cloudburst phlox that we planted and this was one that we got on clearance and it's already starting to put out some blooms and some really good fresh growth. So I think we're actually going to see some, some really nice foliage and blooms on that plant this year because there's still plenty of summer left. So that's exciting. I've been working hard to keep the water available to the animals during this period of time when we've had drought. I think we probably got about an inch and a half of rain when it rained for about two days. We still need to catch up more, um, but it's definitely an excellent start. You can see this pinky winky hydrangea is starting to push out some blooms and uh, they're more prominent on the south side which gets the most sun but it's definitely going to have quite a few blooms and I think it's going to be blooming much better than it did last year so that's exciting. I think it uh, is going to do well in this spot. Back here everything is thriving and I'm thinking about doing a little bit of editing in here because things are beginning to put on some size, especially the striptease hostas. So I may pull one or two of them out along the edge here because I definitely want to keep the hookahs along the edge. And I may put them into that spot in the back there where I had pulled out some hostas that I didn't want in there anymore or that were not preferred and something made a bed out of my two ferns here so if you think I don't have troubles I definitely do these are my Japanese painted ferns that just got crushed I don't know something laid down there and took a nap in it overnight a while ago and they just have never perked back up so that's too bad um, but they'll either grow back next year or they won't <laughs> and if they don't, I have plenty uh, more that I can divide, or I could use any other type of plant that I have as well. I'm really, really enjoying this Annabelle hydrangea back here. It continues to put out some new fresh blooms, which is fantastic. And it really hasn't flapped because it's been mildly protected by the canopy above it just gets enough light and just enough rain but uh, I planted this one last year and it's probably about three feet tall by about oh two and a half feet wide right now it's looking really good 
And this hosta has really filled in this hole along with the fern as well. I'm still deciding where I'm going to put my three uh, back to the fuchsia salvias, but they are looking very healthy um, after bringing them home and treating them kindly. So I think they'll be happy when I find a spot for them in the garden. Might even get an extra set of blooms. My Laura garden phlox, the pink here, are beginning to bloom around uh, the garden in quite a few different spots. So probably in the next week, we're going to just get a profusion of pink phlox blooms. And I love the phlox. I mean, I think the phlox looks so beautiful. And there's so many different colors of them. And I think I'm going to get a second flush of blooms from these flax here, which are the ultra pink. Now I did some cutting back in this bed. The soapwort um, was kind of flopped over because it didn't have enough water. And so I have trimmed that back and it may put out some additional blooms too. The Wygela here that's kind of like a baby standard is pushing out a little bit of new growth, which is nice to see because it was not looking very happy there for a while. It's been interesting. I don't know about you guys, but I have seen a lot of spider webs due to the dryness in my garden. Now over here, I pulled a couple of hostas out. Um, I really am editing out some of the green and white uh, undulata hostas because they're not my favorite. I've just had them as fillers. So these are the purple, I think it's called purple pikes peak penstemon. So these were just some seedlings that grew between the cracks in my bricks. And so I pulled them out and they're going to grow now and they will be perennial for me. We have one bloom on this banana cream two daisy and we have several blooms that are getting ready to peek out. One thing that has really excited me here is, guys, remember how I told you I was going to try to divide my mega caramel hookra? Well, look what popped up in the cracks of my pathway. I have two. I have one right here, and I have a teeny tiny one back here, but I'm almost 100% positive that these are the mega caramel. I'm so excited. My biggest fear is that I will step on them. I should put a big stick in front of them or around them so I don't do that. Now in this bed, the large mahogany monster hookers are starting to bloom. And behind this one is my weeping spruce. So I took my squiggly stake and I put one of the long branches up it because that way over the winter, it will harden off and we'll add that extra bit of height to it. And we'll get some more growth off of the sides and won't that make for a really interesting shape as it grows. The nice thing about this squiggly stake is that I don't have to tie the branch to it or worry about um, that at all. And when I pull it off, I can just twist it out. So it will be very cool. I think the rain was a real sigh of relief for this garden bed because it gets quite a bit of sun for what I would consider to be more of a part sun than part shade garden, even though there's lots of hostas in here. And so I really was pushing it with the 90 degree temperatures and the lack of rain, but it's definitely doing well. I do have some plans to make more changes. Um, you know, recently we planted some of the salvia over here and along the left side of this bed, these green and white variegated hostas, I plan to take out hopefully by this fall and um, replace them. That's yet to be determined, but um, I think it will be really fun. And my goodness, you guys, look at the blooms on these golden tiara hostas. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blooms on these. It is absolutely amazing. The pollinators have 
been in delight and in heaven, just coming through and moving from one flower to the next. And I'd say they're about halfway spent, so probably this coming weekend I will end up coming through and deadheading. We do have some green grass. Not all of it turned green again, but we do have some. And the little lime hydrangea back here is doing well and still putting on its buds. So we have a ways to go with that one before it will bloom. It is one of the last in the garden to bloom. But we have a lot of hydrangeas that are in bloom right now. The liatris is still blooming all throughout the garden. And these storm shelter daylilies are a really beautiful color. We also have the Rhythm of My Heart Daylilies next to those. And then the Diamond Rouge Hydrangea here. I can finally see the buds are really getting close to opening, so probably within the next week. And then the Snowdrift Rose in this corner. Isn't that beautiful? This is the one we got on clearance, you guys. Isn't that pretty? It's doing so well. And this whole bed has really just started to look even more lovely. I got two really big shoots that just came up on this Toscano Barberry right here. So it's really gonna add on some height to it over the next year. The quick fire hydrangea is looking amazing. Unfortunately and sadly, I think I have lost the diamond ball clematis. I'm not sure what it succumbed to, but it doesn't look good. Might have been the heat, might have been not enough water, could have been that the chipmunks and squirrels are digging little tunnels and eating roots. Um, any number of factors in my garden could be at fault. We're getting a new daisy bloom on some of the daisies I just recently tucked in here. Isn't that one beautiful? Just so crisp and white. And the orange smoothie daylilies next to it. I am not sold on the orange smoothie daylilies, you guys, I have to tell you. Those may be going to friends and family. I think I'm gonna get another set of blooms on this set of flocks here, which are the opening act white and the ultra pink. So that should be pretty. We've got some David flocks back here. And you'll see I have things tucked in my garden pretty much everywhere if you haven't noticed already. Wherever I can find space for a plant, I'm going to put one. This viburnum is looking so nice. And I'm going to come through here you can see I have an old-fashioned pitcher filled up with water right next to this Rudbeckia here. It's starting to bend forward and it's absolutely stunning. So I'm going to cut a couple of blooms off those, or at least maybe half of them, and see if it pops up. If it doesn't stand upright after that, I might just cut all of them and take them inside for a beautiful bouquet, but I think it will look very lovely in this old antique pitcher. My hanging baskets are stunning. I mean, if I say so myself, I think that the combination turned out really good. And uh, my little double nine bark, you guys, look at that. That gorgeous. It's finally starting to gain a little bit of height. And next year what will happen is those that are standing straight up will begin to drape an arch over to the sides and to the front. So it's gonna begin to really fill in that back gap. And I plan to keep these arborvitas rather small. I'm going to try to keep trimming them um, so that they don't suck up all the water in the bed and they don't overtake it or overpower it. The hookers are doing amazing. And this is a mum, huge mountain of mum. And then we have a pure joy sedum right here. Oh goodness, this could be like an hour long video, you guys. 
there's so much that's blooming right now. There's the strawberry sundae hydrangea. And let's just come around here and look at the fountain garden because this area is looking really, really nice right now. Um, this is a Japanese maple and it is so deep and dark. But then behind it, the contrast with the gorgeous vanilla strawberry hydrangea. It's so pretty. And it glows up against these August moon hostas as well. And you can just see those top panicles are really starting to bud out. There's so many hydrangeas happening right now in the garden. It's their season to begin to shine. There's the berry white one over there. And that one's going to have giant panicles on it. And I love the deep, rich tones that it turns in terms of pink. And then over here in this pot, we have the firelight hydrangea. When I bought this one, I noticed that there were two stems in it. So I actually have two hydrangeas I was able to get out of it. And I plan to plant them into the landscape this fall. And beneath it, a neon sedum. I think these pots are looking really nice also. I finally got one canna out of all of the cannas that I bought from Costco. Um, only one of them was able to be grown because they were all kind of rotten, just like the caladiums I got from them. It's very unfortunate. It's the first time I've had that happen. So how about these hydrangeas? We have some Incredibles in the back and the Strawberry Sunday in the front with the fine line buckthorn. And then back behind here, we have a pot that we have growing, and this is the Diamond Rouge Hydrangea. So you can see how this one being exposed to full sun is really in the midst of its bloom, whereas the one that's between the two Arborvitas I showed you earlier is just barely beginning to put its buds out. We also have an Evening Rose Hibiscus over here as well. So more summer blooms are coming. Well, let's head out to the front garden and take a look there. You can see that the alliums are really beginning to fill out. And these roses are getting ready to put out some more blooms again too. Isn't that gorgeous? So we start on this side of the fence with another hydrangea. This is the strawberry sundae. And you can see the betony is going over now, but we still have lots of liatris along here. The bottom half of them continue to be in bloom. And then over here, the PG hydrangea. Definitely in full bloom. Now this is a lace cap variety, so you can see all the little teeny tiny flowers. And the pollinators really like the teeny tiny flowers of those open small blooms. So the lace cap hydrangeas definitely attract the pollinators even more. Now I want to show you my front porch. This is not an area that I like all that much most of the time, but look at the size of the coleus. This is the coleus I grew from seed this winter. And holy moly, I mean, the leaves are bigger than my hand and covering up that birdhouse. And they are absolutely amazing. Look at that. I mean, you see the bird bath that's to the right and you see the size of that coleus leaf. It's crazy. It's 
So over here we have the Liatris still blooming and the Hastas are so much happier now that we got this rain. And look at all of the new growth on this bee balm. This is the part in my Cerise bee balm. This is the one I got on clearance. So I think this is going to really fill out. I think I'm going to get some flowers on that soon. All of the hellebores in here and the hostas are just so much happier. We have a beautiful maidenhair fern in this bed. It looks really happy also. It's a very relaxing and calming garden to look at because of all the different mixture of green hues. I really enjoy that. Now down here, the hostas have gotten so tall and big that the sky pencil holly is just poking over the top. But hopefully it will continue to grow and get bigger. Again down at the end here you can see that the golden tiara hostas have so many blooms on them. I have a serious amount of deadheading to do in the next week or so. I have the sweet orange, sweet summer orange rose flax. I think that's what it's called over here. Really full bloom and it smells good too. You can see some of the orangey hues and then that deep pink eye. Isn't that pretty? Definitely the stars of the show in this garden bed are the bobo hydrangeas. The white stands out from very far. Now this bed I can see when I'm sitting in my living room. So it's really important to me that I'm able to look out the window and see something beautiful. And it's definitely getting there. Um, I do have some deadheading to do on the daisies. These goldfinch daisies though definitely provide a nice pop of color and I'm just going to have to continue to work to keep the mums from overtaking them because this mum is a very good creeper uh, which makes it an excellent ground cover perennial that I can just keep planting in. It reminds me a little bit of the ajuga in that it just keeps going and going but it's also something that's easy to pull out when you need to pull it out. So the oak leaf hydrangea over here, I'm actually getting another bloom on. And this just popped up after the rain. So I thought they only bloomed on old wood. Maybe this variety blooms on new wood as well because that is definitely not old wood at the tip. Lots of mums getting big here as well. We have one there. And then we have one on the other side. I'm not getting any rebloom on the uh, Veronica yet. This penstemon, I might just let it go to seed on both sides and see if I get a whole bunch more in here because that would be beautiful. And this Merlot Rose Salvia is putting on some pretty light pink blooms right now. Now around the front we have some beautiful bobo hydrangeas also, so let's check those out. Last week they looked really nice, but this week I think they look even more beautiful because they continue to lighten up and I cannot wait to see them begin to deepen into a light pink color as they change over. But we have a ways to go before that will happen because it's still really nice and warm here in Michigan. We're going to get back into the 90s. It's going to be real hot again. I love the way that this uh, ice blue salute uh, salvia looks next to that boba hydrangea. That's just a beautiful contrast. And the rose marble salvia over here is starting to rebloom. My 
neighbor across the street says she thinks she gets more enjoyment out of this garden than I do. But I don't necessarily think that's true. <laughs> I definitely come out and walk around and look at it every day. So in this garden bed over here, the coneflowers are definitely leaning. They have gotten so tall. Some of them are five feet tall. And so I have this bucket of water here. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to cut quite a few of them in attempt to help them be able to stand up on their own. Um, if necessary, I will cut all of the blooms and have a really giant bouquet just to make sure that they don't completely fall over and end up uprooting themselves because that would not be good. But man, that lemony, not lemony lace, this is the black lace elderberry. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's such a nice contrast with that juniper. And the berries on the blue muffin are turning blue, you guys. Check it out. Blue muffin. And then we have the Oscar Peterson roses, which smell so good. And then over here, this grass is really turning a nice color of blue. The one at the far end is not doing as well as the other two, but I think it's going to be okay. It just seemed like it needed a little bit more help than the other two even when I bought it. So if worse comes to worse um, and these all make it through the winter, I can always divide these to come up with another one. All right, well, due to technical difficulties, we um, just had to start recording again. This is the next day, so you'll notice a lighting difference. Um, it was just recording the audio and not the video. So here the Gara are doing really well and I think they just look beautiful as they dance in the wind and the Concord Barberry that are behind them are going to really set off those bright pink blooms as they grow on and I'm really hoping that as I push the zone with these, these are a zone 6 plant and uh, we have zone 5B here. So I'm definitely pushing the edge but I think they're going to be established really well by the time that winter comes this year. So that should help. All of the coneflowers are doing really well in this bed. And we have lots of the garden flax, the Laura pink and the Calibracoa and the other plants in here, like the Verbena and the Clematis are still growing on very well and I think it just looks lovely. One thing that I'm really enjoying this year is seeing my tiny wine nine bark get bigger and these are supposed to get about two inches or excuse me two feet tall and two feet wide and they have definitely put on some good growth this year and again with this nine bark it will do the same thing as the little devil nine bark where it will reach up and then it will begin to have an arching habit. So I have one on both ends and I really think that will tie this bed in well with the next bed uh, that has the black lace elderberry in it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I sure enjoy sharing my garden with you all and with all of the pollinators. And I hope your gardens are growing on well and that you got some rain as well. So thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Bye.